From fax machines to landline phones, these once essential skills now evoke amusement and nostalgia. People born between 1946 and 1964, known as baby boomers, are no exception. But there are even more insane baby boomer skills that have disappeared. Here's our list. You'll be amazed by the latest baby boomer skills. In the 1950s and 60s, many baby boomers heavily relied on traditional print newspapers to start their mornings. Traditional print newspapers were produced using conventional printing techniques such as offset printing or letterpress and distributed in physical form, usually on paper. These newspapers contained news articles, advertisements, columns, and other information and were published daily or weekly. However, due to the growth of digital media and increased access to news online, the physical newspaper is quickly becoming outdated. Younger generations have embraced digital news platforms, which offer real-time updates, interactive material, and personalized news feeds. Drive-ins were extremely popular with the baby boomer generation, especially in the 1950s and 1960s. Watching a movie under the starry sky with traditional snacks like popcorn, candy, and soda from the car. The drive-in was a place for families or friends to spend quality time together and an affordable destination for a night out. There are approximately 4,000 drive-ins in the United States, the majority of which were located in rural areas. Despite their decline, drive-ins remain popular in the U.S., where both current and older films are shown, and double features are organized. Ohio, New York, and Pennsylvania have the most drive-ins, with about 30 remaining locations but they continue to be nostalgic and cultural icons in America. Landline phones, also known as wired phones, were a common feature in every household for a long time. These phones were connected to the telephone network via physical cables, usually installed in homes or offices. What memories do wired landline phones with the familiar ringing sound evoke for you? They were particularly prevalent before the rise of mobile phones and wireless communication technologies. They became obsolete when the baby boomer generation retired. As technology advances, younger generations prefer mobile communication over landline phones. Smartphones, with their convenience and adaptability, including messaging apps and video calls, have rendered landline phones unnecessary. Soda fountains were popular in drugstores and cafes from the 1940s to the 1960s. Behind the counter, employees known as soda jerks prepared and served drinks and snacks. Soda jerks manually mix syrups, carbonated drinks, ice floats, sundaes, and other sweets. Sitting at the soda fountain counter allowed people to converse while enjoying a delicious snack. Milkshakes and malts were thick, creamy beverages hand-mixed with flavored syrups and milk in a metal cup. The rise of fast food restaurants and the availability of pre-made sodas led to the decline of soda fountains. Visiting the corner soda fountain was a beloved American tradition among youths and families at the time. Typewriters were popular from the late 19th to the late 20th century, allowing for rapid professional-looking commercial communication. The type is pressed against the carriage of the roller that holds the paper, creating the distinctive rattling sound of a mechanical typewriter. The ringing of a bell indicates the end of the line. One challenge typists faced was correcting errors on a typewriter. If a mistake was made, the typist had to return to the line and use conventional whiteout fluid to eliminate the error before retyping it. Another option was a typewriter eraser. This technology, depicted below, allowed the typists to erase their mistakes. It was similar to a pencil eraser, but the rubber of this eraser worked considerably harder to remove typewriter ink. However, this gadget was not the best technique for erasing on a typewriter, as it could potentially tear the paper, and it simply wasn't effective enough to justify the risk. Remember the era of the rise of large music festivals, such as Woodstock, the Monterey Pop Festival, and the Isle of Wight Festival? Without a doubt, one of the most iconic cultural festivals in American history, Woodstock's Three Days of Peace and Music in 1969 embodied it. Over 400 young people flooded Max Yasker's dairy farm in Bethel, New York, to see more than 40 live acts, including Jimi Hendrix, Grateful Dead, CCR, and The Who. Woodstock represented the emergence of rock and roll, the unifying power of music, and the steadfast optimism of a youthful generation. Monterey Pop, with its theme of music, love, and flowers, attracted hundreds of thousands of visitors to Northern California. It was a celebration of generosity and cultural transformation, a critical moment in the summer of love, and one of the most defining moments of the baby boomer generation. The Isle of Wight Festival 1970 was a music festival held on the western part of the English Isle of Wight from August 26 to August 31, 1970 at Afton Down. 
It was the last of three successive music festivals held on the island between 1968 and 1970, and it was widely regarded as the largest musical event of its time, attracting more people than Woodstock. These events were not only musical gatherings, but also social and cultural phenomena that captured the spirit of the time. In the 1950s and 1960s, 45 RPM vinyl records were the most popular medium for recording music. These little records with huge holes spun at 45 revolutions per minute, enabling a single song on both sides. The 45 RPM format became popular after RCA Victor produced the first 45s in 1949. Top record companies such as Motown and Atlantic distributed successful tracks by prominent performers on 45s. Record players with automatic changers could store and play many 45s in succession. Collecting and playing 45 RPM records was a component of youth culture at the time. Kids today may never know the thrill of placing vinyl on a record player and watching it spin around while playing music. This, however, was a way of life for a boomer, and digital music cannot match that feeling. Do you remember the time of using fax machines, primarily due to their widespread use and popularity, especially in the 1960s and 1970s? It was an era when paper communication was the norm. The sound of the fax machine connecting to send pages, and the excitement of receiving important documents. The use of fax machines was an innovative and convenient way to transmit documents quickly, especially in office environments, professional settings, and businesses. Over time, fax machines became increasingly outdated due to technology. The process of printing, scanning, and transferring documents via fax has been replaced by more efficient and direct digital technologies. Younger generations began to use more digital communication tools such as email, instant messaging, and cloud storage, significantly reducing the need for fax machines. Do you remember the days of bookshelves filled with printed encyclopedias, such as Britannica and Worldbook? A time when physical reference works were the primary source of information. Spending days flipping through the pages of an encyclopedia, searching for knowledge and information, and the satisfaction that came with finding answers to your questions. It also symbolizes a time of slower pace and more patience where people took the time to research and explore information without the immediate access to digital resources we have today. Younger generations have grown up with the internet and having instant access to a wealth of information at their fingertips. Online encyclopedias like Wikipedia provide constantly updated and diverse knowledge, rendering bulky printed versions unnecessary. Handwriting used to be taught in school, and different generations learned different styles. It was a time when it was common to write by hand before digital technologies became the norm. The feeling of holding a fountain pen on paper and seeing one's own handwriting style may evoke a sense of connection with the past, a reminder of a time when communication was more personal and tangible than it is now. Writing multiple letters in succession, taking notes in class, and drafting a document were everyday skills that were practiced. The baby boomer generation placed great value on excellent penmanship. Their choice of pens varied depending on the application. Using a fountain pen compels you to adopt a distinctive handwriting style. If you're curious, take a look at calligraphy, which is typically done with steel tips similar to fountain pens. Poodle skirts were popular among young females in the 1950s. These swing skirts earned their name from the poodle embroidery on them. Poodle skirts were usually worn during sock hops, which were casual dance events among high school pupils. Sock hops, called after the gym floors where students danced in their socks, showcased the latest rock and roll music. Teens in the post-war era associated wearing a poodle skirt and dancing at a high school sock hop with carefree youth. In the 1950s adolescent culture, poodle skirts and sock hops represent the famous styles and activities that thrived. Imagine a group of companions getting excited about going on a road trip and laying out a paper map on the hood of their reliable vehicle. With pen or highlighter in hand, they methodically plan their schedule, each stroke heightening the anticipation of the adventure ahead of them as they eagerly trace picturesque routes and meandering highways. For boomers, paper maps were more than just folded sheets of paper. They're doors to exploration, with every fold offering the possibility of new learning. They cherish the feeling of independence that comes with traveling the traditional route as they reflect on those easier days. We may have traveled more efficiently thanks to technology, but it's difficult not to miss the good old days when getting lost was all part of the adventure. Boomers remember those days with a twinge of nostalgia in their eyes. Which baby boomer life skill do you believe is most crucial to preserve? Share your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a like if you enjoyed this video.